Welcome back to the Shopping Channel and welcome to my favourite part of the week, Wine Time, where I get to talk to a wonderful range of people and we get to meet all sorts of fabulous people involved with the wine industry. And today it's Giles Hine, who is the... Uh, Man marketing director of Vintelect, and just, I was just trying to think of your title. Right. Um, you haven't been promoted yet, have you? Unfortunately not. No, no, I see the boss sitting in the corner, <laughs> so that's OK. We'll talk to him later. Mm -hmm. OK, so, Giles, talk to me a little bit about Vintelect. Oh, Vintelect is all about intelligent wine buying. So the idea is that we get you the best value in the market. So that doesn't mean the cheapest wine, doesn't mean necessarily mean the most expensive. It just means the best value, really good bang for your buck, if you like. So by becoming involved with Vintelect, I can get... Uh, what, what, how, how many sort of wines have you got in your, 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 cat, your folders? Oh, look, we've got over 200 currently, and that's going to grow. Um, the idea behind Vintelect is that it will become uh, the largest marketplace for wines in New Zealand, mainly Kiwi wines but also mm. some foreigners as well. And is that across all varietals? Across all varietals, including some you won't have heard of. Goodness me. Well, I, I, this is going to be really, really interesting. Now, one of the words that I often hear talking about wine, I'm just losing my earpiece, so we'll, we'll just poke that back in, um, is the word terroir, which I understand is spelled T E. Double R O I R, and I'd really like you to, in layman's terms, just explain that to me. Uh, terroir is a French word, and in France they're particularly keen on talking about where the wine comes from, as in what soils it's grown on, and how those soils put characteristics into the wine. So the idea is that uh, if it's grown on stony ground, you'll get some mineral uh, effects uh, or flavours in the wine. Mm -hmm. And if it's grown on um, uh, loamy wines, then some of that will come through as well. So it's all about characterising where the wines come from, giving them heritage, if you like. So when, so from the my understanding, the stonier and the rockier, and the more the the vines get stressed yep. as the roots are growing down, yep. that is actually really helping the wine. Is that right? Absolutely. The, the the more within reason, but the more you stress a vine, the more it will partake and display the elements of the ground beneath it. All right. The less you stress it, you tend to get a, a fairly watery, insipid wine. Mm. So mm. some of the best vines are on some of the worst ground you'll ever find. So. This is Osawa Wines. Yep. Tell me a little bit about this. How does this work? Oh, look, uh, Osawa was a company formed by uh, a Japanese gentleman, uh, a wine lover. Uh, his name was Taizo Osawa, or is Taizo <coughs> Osawa. And he decided that he was going to get himself a really good vineyard. So he flew around uh, America, Australia, and New Zealand, um, looking at pieces of land, and eventually came to Hawke's Bay and, needless to say, fell in love with Hawke's Bay. Um, he bought 100 acres uh, from Craggy Range, and uh, which is, you know, superb winery mm, uh, in yes, Australia. Well, they, I mean, they've, they've, they've had a long history of, of wine excellence. So, yeah, to buy it from Craggy Range, that would be quite exceptional. Yep, absolutely. Mm. And then he went and found himself the best winemaker he possibly could. At that time, uh, Rod McDonald was winemaker of the year. Um, he'd been winemaker at Vidal. Um, who was very successful at uh, Hawke's Bay Winery. And he's, he's a man who has a, a huge international reputation f as a great winemaker with very high holistic values. A absolutely, so, yeah. So his, his, his culture of viticulture, as it's called, um, talk to me a little bit about that. Oh, look, uh, Rod's all about making uh, wines that reflect the region that they're from. And, uh, you know, he's particularly good in Hawke's Bay, but he makes wines from around... Um, New Zealand, and you know he's just as good a winemaker as is in his generation, really. So, and his particular passion is using uh, completely pesticide-free insect controls and things like that, isn't yep, it? Over absolutely. the vines. Absolutely. Yep. So this 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 sort of winemaking culture, which is becoming a lot more involved in New Zealand, is is something that. It, uh, Mr. Osawa has really embraced? Yep, it's all about sustainable sustainable wine growing is what you're talking about. And it's all about promoting that green image of New Zealand and using that in relation to wine. And mm -hmm. uh, as few pesticides as is possible and um, as many green um, um, winemaking techniques as you possibly can. So 
Uh, how many vintages has Mr. Osawa produced? First vintage was 2008, and um, 2012 is now in the bottle. So, so one of the things that I'm really interested in is the say the difference between Hawke's Bay Pinot Noir and then we go down to the the Queenstown Pinot Noir. Uh, how does this work? Uh, yeah, typically, and I mean, look, every wine is different, but typically um, Otago Pinot Noir is dark, dense, um, plums, dark fruit, touch of bramble, where Hawke's Bay will slightly be more red berry flavours uh, of the fruit, so you get cherries, red currants, that sort so of thing. So it'd be a slightly softer wine, would yeah, that be a fair yeah, slightly assumption? softer, slightly silkier. Um, you know, and that's not meant to be in any way less or, or, or you know, better than uh, Otago, just different. And that is terroir. That is the expression of terroir. Yeah, yeah. So the Hawke's Bay wine, then, this, this outstanding Flying Mouton, New Zealand Hawke's Bay Pinot Noir 2009, um, Tell me a little bit about this. What's, what's the package that you're doing? Uh, the package that we're doing is that uh, you buy six bottles. Normally that would cost you $210, um, but today it's, a hundred, uh, it's 120 What, you mean for the shopping channel? For the shopping channel, Exclusively, it's you're going to do me six bottles of this 2009 Hawke's Bay Pinot Noir, yep. the Flying Mouton, yep. for 120 Yep. That's, that's outstanding. The item number is 102456. And we would guarantee delivery within 72 hours with the $5 handling fee anywhere in New Zealand for that. Absolutely, we can do that. So that, that's... Now, listen, just, just tell me a little bit about the nose of this, because people talk about the nose of wine, and that is... I'm getting cherries. Yep, that's what you should get. I'm getting a marvellous sort of soft, luscious... I want to use the word luscious. Is that acceptable? Mm -hmm. and you can use the word luscious. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not about you, about the wine. Oh, oh OK. Um, flying mouton. That's a French word. Yeah, mouton means sheep. Um, and um, Mr Osawa, when he came here, look, you know, New Zealand, sheep. Apparently, when he was in Hawke's Bay, he looked up at the clouds. They were white and fluffy, and hence flying mouton was born. That sounds a wonderful story, and it's with, without doubt a wonderful wine. It has a load of medals. It does. It's the Flying Mouton, Hawke's Bay, 2009 Pinot Noir. Delivery within 72 hours. There's a special shopping channel price of $120 for the six-pack. The item number that you'll need is 102456, available on the shoppingchannel.co.nz right now. And we just are so excited about this.